And the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 says a second wave of infection is likely to happen very soon. The task force advised Nigerians to brace themselves as it will unfold the next steps in the national response efforts before the weekend. PTF Chairman Boss Mustafa urged Nigerians to continue to take the responsibility, stating that no nation has immunity against the resurgence of the virus. He says strict adherence to COVID-19 guidelines and safety protocols remained the only protection against infection. Joining us via Sky from Lagos is Secretary of the Nigerian Medical Association Lagos State Branch, Dr. Ime Okun. Good morning, Dr. Okun. Thank you for joining us on TVC Breakfast. Good morning, Veronica and Theophilus. How are you this morning? Very Good morning. well, thank I'm doing you. Well. Now, the Presidential Task Force has asked Nigerians to brace up for perhaps a second wave of uh, the virus in the country. How concerning is this for you? Yeah, so this is worrisome. It's quite worrisome because at some point where we were thinking, oh, we are about to flatten the curve, we are getting there, relaxing the lockdowns and the restrictions, then people now are throwing caution to the air. And when we were thinking that the number of new cases were going to go down to single digits, and now we're having 225, 165 in Lagos, this is quite worrisome. Where we don't have a cure, we don't have a vaccine yet, it is very worrisome. Yes, it is very worrisome, but in looking at all of this, what do you think might have led us to this, might have led the federal government to think that um, a second wave of the COVID-19 will come up? Okay, so it's for obvious reasons, because at, when we're looking at the statistics, you know, there was a time we were having 500 or more cases every day, then it now went down to 100 and something, then all of a sudden we are having 200 and something every day. I mean, that is um, something that will make you to be worried because in the pandemic, it's not happening only in Nigeria. That is why we call it the pandemic. It's all over the world. We've seen this kind of um, trend outside the country, in the U.S., in, even in China. At some point, they didn't have cases. Then all of a sudden, they now started having new cases again. So that is what you, you look at what is happening around the world. And we are scientists. So that is what makes you to think, could it be that we're about to have a second wave? So it, it's postulations that we have here now. Now, the, the, PT have, the PTF rather has... Uh, has raised concerns about uh, the level of testing, uh, especially in, within states, uh, that uh, some states are not doing enough with regards to testing. And it also talked about uh, a lot of Nigerians not taking responsibility in terms of observing the safety protocols. Now, how do we bridge this gap to perhaps prevent a second wave at this time? Okay, so concerning the testing, you know, initially there was, there was support for uh, the testing. I'm not quite sure we're getting the kind of support. Of course, you're there, you don't expect the kind of, when, when the pandemic started and um, we had the first case on 27th of February in Nigeria, all the supports were coming from everywhere, the federal government, NCDC to all the states, and even in, uh, uh, okay, so even the private sector and all that, we were coming up, people were donating test kits and all that. But that kind of support is not what we are having currently. Of course, we don't expect it to be there forever. So we are having reduced testing. And um, as long as we're not testing enough, we may not be able to, even the 225 that we're talking about, if we were doing more testing, it's possible that we'll be able to realize even more. And we all know that we have more asymptomatic cases and mildly symptomatic cases in Nigeria. So you can have somebody walk around you, somebody in, your, in the office, somebody you meet in the market that is positive actually, but is not showing symptoms. It's only if you test that you'll be able to know. And like I said earlier, people have thrown caution to the wind. People are busy going about without face masks. People, even in places where they usually used to tell you before you come in, wash your hands. People are careless these days. They actually allow people to go into some maybe uh, malls, even some schools. 
So we need to be very strict in enforcing these guidelines because, like I said earlier, there is no treatment yet, there is no cure, there is no vaccine yet. The only thing we have here are the precautionary measures, which we need to take more seriously. Everybody has to take responsibility. Well, the Lagos State Government at a point, um, while encouraging people to wear their face mask, um, also announced that there will be uh, repercussions if no one wear, adheres to the safety protocols. But like you have said, people have thrown caution to the wind. Now, how best can the government, what best can the government do to encourage people to go for testing one and also to adhere to the safety protocols? Of course, threats might not work, but how best can it happen? Also, re putting in mind that a test kit has been um, by a Nigerian has been approved by the World Health Organization and it's quite cheaper than the normal. What can the government do to ensure that people go for testing and they're encouraged to adhere to the safety protocols? Okay, so I'd like to say, in as much as we have um, more testing uh, uh, places now, we have places in private, but then, you know, it's um, not so, people consider that cost. So they prefer to go to um, government places where you have the testing done for free. So the government is trying to encourage as many as possible to come do these testings for free. Like in Lagos, we have it done at the Nigerian Institute of Medical Research, Yaba. It's done at the Biosecurity uh, Lab in Mainland Hospital, Yaba. You have it done free again in the Virology Lab in Luth. So we've got to do more of that testing. Coming to talk about enforcement, you know how we are, you human beings. We are adults, and that is why I keep saying we have to take responsibility. Government cannot go about with, uh, with stick and start saying, if you don't do this, um, we are going to pay a fine of this. We need to talk to ourselves as adults. And what we are trying to do as public health people is to still try to use that avenue of talking through our gatekeepers and influencers, you know, the community leaders and the church, the religious leaders, the mosque, the imams and the pastors. Because when you talk mm. to Doc. your people, when they talk directly, you know, you they will they will comply better. You know, so we are trying to create more awareness and sensitization. It's the best way to go, so that people can All right. go and uh, ensure these guidelines are being enforced. As we approach the National Physicians Week now, health system recovery is quite important, especially at this time uh, where the country is trying to recover from the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. And of course, in preventing a second wave of the pandemic, how do we ensure that? Good morning, Theophilus. Good morning, Veronica. Thank you for having me. So, um, as we as we discussed from stemming from what uh, the PTF told us yesterday, nationwide every year, the physicians come together every October to celebrate themselves. This year is very peculiar because we are talking about COVID-19 here, and that is why the theme is centered around COVID-19. That is strengthening the um, systems, the strategies for system, health systems recovery during the COVID-19 pandemic. We know that all spheres have been affected during this um, pandemic, especially health systems. Even the strongest health systems outside the country in the developed world have been affected by this COVID-19 pandemic. So we're going to be gathering next week from 18th to 24th to discuss strategies to be able to recover for this from the COVID-19 pandemic, we've had diseases. We have, we still have non-chronic, uh, non-communicable diseases with us: the hypertension, the diabetes, and all that. But the COVID-19 has really come and distorted so many things. So we need to sit down in a roundtable and discuss the strategies. In Lagos, the national, um, the national president is going to be coming to Lagos to celebrate the frontliners and their efforts in containing the uh, pandemic. In in the nation's epicenter, which is Lagos, we know that Lagos is the epicenter for uh, COVID-19 pandemic. So, and our deputy incident commander, Professor Aki Abayomi, is going to be the one that will be the keynote speaker talking on this theme, the strategies right. that we're going to. All for, right. So, um, as, as much as uh, we will be having that uh, occasion or event, 
Uh, one critical aspect that you mentioned that I would like for you to talk about is the aspect of the frontliners. A majority of them uh, who were on the front lines were said to have had perhaps mental breakdowns, uh, having issues that had to do with, because of the weight of uh, the work they had to do. And in strengthening the health system, how critical is uh, the mental state to achieving that? Okay, so, um, you know, when we talk about health, we, uh, WHO defines health as a complete state of well-being. It has to do with your social well-being, it has to do with your physical, psychological, very importantly, you know, not merely the absence of diseases, and this affects everybody, and physicians too, the frontliners too, are human beings, and we're talking about their health there. Yes, it has affected, because even while we're trying to take care of our patients, we quite know that many of these frontliners got infected. They have families, they have relatives, and it affected them mentally. And you know, when you have psychological implications to your health, it affects your general output and even the work. So when we're talking about health systems recovery, we know we've been affected human resources wise, and we've been affected material wise. And even now, the way we are operating is not like we used to. We can't afford to have all the patients come into the hospitals the way they used to because we need to spread out, we need to maintain the physical distancing and those COVID-19 um, guidelines. So all these things are part of the things that have affected our health systems. Talking about the um, frontliners again, talking about their mental health, we have a committee in place with um, psychiatrists, psychologists and all that that actually have a way of um, talking to them. So we have a, a, a line, a link between the uh, frontliners where they can seek help because uh, physicians can heal themselves, but then sometimes we need to talk to another person, an expert, when it comes to this because you cannot treat yourself. All right, thank you very much, Dr. Emilko, for talking to us on this. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good day.